The optical spectroscopy is used to study the atmosphere of the discharge. What Mani was talking about is a surface analysis of the metal. Optical spectroscopy is used again to study the atmosphere around the anode. I'm going to have to go over there. Okay. Okay. <laughs> this is wavelengths of light coming out of the chamber, and optical spectroscopy is like a really fancy prism that shows you the rainbow colors that are in your glowing sample. It's a wonderful science. It's been perfected for so many decades that it's one of the most reliable tools that an astronomer or a plasma physicist has to study. When you light up the chamber at low discharge with a simple atmosphere, you might see that line and maybe one more here, okay? Because it's a very simple discharge. It's easy to know what's in there. When you turn up the power and you get things really rolling in there, you get this whole sea of lines. A lot of elements produce similar lines. When you start getting complicated, it's not so easy, but it's a wonderful game. It's like Sudoku on, on steroids. You try to find out what elements might be producing the lines that you're seeing. It's part of the art of the, of the science there. And it took us a while, but then we noticed this triplet here. This is a triplet of lines that are very close together. This triplet here and this triplet here. And our intuition said, Let's focus on those, because that's so unique of a fingerprint. No group of elements would make that. It's got to be one. That was the intuition, at least. And if you ask your optical spectroscopy software to match the known lines of different elements, after a lot of hunting, we came across manganese. And manganese lies exactly on this triplet, this triplet, and this triplet. It's basically impossible that that could be any other, statistically impossible, any other element or group of elements. These other ones, we don't know yet. We're still hunting. It takes a lot of hours to hunt this sort of a diagram. So that means that we have manganese, which is another metal, that is in the atmosphere, but not on the surface, right? We don't know why. But it's, it's very clear that that's happening. We also saw in the atmosphere, the green ones here, the lithium is also in the atmosphere that was not on the surface, the manganese, and then the sodium, the Na there, that appears in both the surface of the anode and in the atmosphere. One of my challenges when we designed Sapphire was that, okay, we can do post-experimental analysis on lots of materials. But the real challenge is, when is it happening? So if you do see transmutation, do you know when or under what conditions these reactions are happening? And so what we can tell you today is, we know now when it's happening. It's because the spectroscopy tells us we can dial it up and we see it come up and we can dial it down and it disappears except for the prominent lines of the particular gas constituent we have in there. So what we can tell you is that the manganese is not one of the gas, part of the gas compositions. We know that. And this is laboratory quality stuff and not with that kind of signal. 